welcome to Koinonia. Here at Great Bridge United Methodist Church, we welcome online and in-person community, lively spiritual conversation, and personal study and reflection so that we may give our hearts and our lives to God in order to transform the world and see to it that no one misses out on the grace of God. We know that the Word of God draws us closer to one another and that the study of God's Word is essential to our Christian walk. So let's open up our browsers and our Bibles and receive God's Word to us today. We are on week two of our sermon series called Idols, and today I'm going to be looking at the Gospel of Matthew, the seventh chapter, and looking at three verses, three verses out of this. I'm going to read to you from a a version known as The Message, which tends to be more on the contemporary side, and hopefully these words will hit you a little bit differently than normal. Jesus said, knowing the correct password, saying, Master, Master, for instance, isn't going to get you anywhere with me. What is required is a serious obedience, doing what my Father wills. I can see it now. At the final judgment, thousands strutting up to me and saying, Master, we preach the message, we bash the demons. Our super spiritual projects had everyone talking. Do you know what I'm going to say? You missed the boat. All you did was use me to make yourselves important. You don't impress me one bit. You're out of here. My friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And they say that senior pastors give associates hard text to preach on. Right? That's not always the case. Wow, wow, you're out of here. You're out of here. I had a hard time picturing Jesus saying that. You're out of here. So maybe, maybe this particular text that our you know, version I use is it's too contemporary, this you're out of here. And certainly the, the message version of Scripture is pretty modern. And so maybe, maybe a different version might shed some light for us this morning. Something that is older and more dignified. Something that rolls off the tongue smartly and in a Shakespearean dialect. So you're the same passage. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of the Father which is in heaven, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I don't know about you, but (laughs) depart from me, ye that work in iniquity, sounds pretty terrifying to, especially coming from a first century Jew with a British accent. So, so, so I guess whether it is in the, in the tongue of the 1611 authorized King James Version or the updated and paraphrased 1993, the message, Jesus reminds us that 
Life is just like that sometimes. We're hoping for a unicorn and we get a goat. I'm sorry, that was from Felinius Gru, that, that supervillain from Despicable Me. Uh, how did that get in there? Uh, we'll come back to it later. How about that? Uh, no, no, here we go. I'm back. No, Jesus reminds us that sometimes the biggest idol in our life is us. It's you and me, a collective me, if I am honest with myself. And if you would seek to be honest with your me self as well. You know, the danger of a passage such as this is to think that this passage is for someone else in the room. That Jesus' words are intended for someone else's ears, someone else's comprehension, someone else's soul, someone else's soul and spirit. Have you ever considered that maybe when the trump shall sound and the Lord descends, when the roll is called up yonder, when we all get to heaven, that maybe we might hear something unexpected, something that that catches us off guard. What if... What if when we get to the pearly gates, we hear something like this? I can't let you in. But Jesus, Jesus, I did all that was required. I know, I know you did. You were given a list. Do's and don'ts, boxes to check, positions to hold and uphold, scriptures to memorize, hymns and praise songs to sing, sacraments and traditions, commandments and a great commission. Yes, Lord, I followed the commandments. I was in service to the great commission. I participated in the sacraments, and they were important to me. I approached them with reverence and with awe, so as to honor the tradition. I sang the hymns and the praise songs, well, most of them. I will admit that there were some that I didn't like, and I probably shouldn't have sent that email. Oh, Lord, Lord. I memorized your word. I taught with your word. I stuck by your word. I defended your word. And when culture came a knocking, I stood firm and I reminded those with other ideas what was on the page, what was in the black and the white, and sometimes even the red. I took the do's and the don'ts seriously. And when I failed, I asked for forgiveness. And so I don't understand why heaven's gate is not open to me now. I certainly checked all the right boxes, all the required boxes here on earth. And so, why? Why can't I Go in. And Jesus replied, Heaven was always around you. It was before you, beside you, above you, and beneath you. It was there right in front of you, and you never saw it. Thy kingdom, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I didn't just say these words to you for you to repeat over and over and over again. I gave them to you to live with them. To open your eyes and your ears to the sights and the sounds of heaven. I gave them to you to breathe in so as to have holy air that fills your lungs with purity. 
enriching the blood that flows through your veins and giving your heart that beat that you would come to know that heaven isn't earned or achieved by checking boxes. You don't get to go into heaven. Heaven comes to you. And when it does, that narcissistic, look at me, watch me, worship me, me first, me only, me, 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 idolatized world begins to fade, becomes replaced by something of far greater importance. Last week I I read a tiny little book, only 74 pages, called The Call to Holiness, Pursuing the Heart of God for the Love of the World by Dr. Timothy Tennant. And no, it wasn't for a homework assignment. In fact, I probably should have done more reading of my homework assignments than this book. But I felt called to read this book. I was struck by the words. In fact, in reading these words, one of the things that struck me was this. The, the lack of catechesis, which is a fancy word for teaching. The lack of teaching in the church has left an entire generation of Christians unsure about what it really means to embody a distinctive Christian identity. Our lives are often not dramatically different from the world. We must reclaim the basic theological point that salvation is grander and more extensive than we have realized. Salvation is the work of the triune God. Dr. Tim, uh, the tenant went on to write, we have also learned that holiness is deeper than merely that eradication of sin in our lives. That is only half the work of God. Sanctification, holiness, is not just about what to avoid. It's about what we produce, namely fruitfulness. And the last point, because I I have to end with that quote about goats and unicorns and life and everything. Dr. Tennant wrote, we will live eternally because we have finally and fully been brought into the vibrant relationship with the triune God, which embodies eternally with all of its perfection." What is perfection? Perfection in a a me first world is this. That when in life, when you're hoping for a unicorn, but instead you get a goat, don't overlook the goat. Because you never know, you never know when the supervillain, the most despicable me person on the planet is changed by love where once love was all wrapped up in the love of oneself, Philinius grew is no match for that triune group of soon-to-be adopted daughters by the name of Margot, Edith, and Agnes. They come into his life unexpectedly and perhaps deliberately, just like the triune God. And while supervillains don't attend, nor do they have any desire to uh, go to little girls' dance recitals. In fact, Gru had this to say, the recital? I'm the greatest criminal mind in all the century. I don't go to little girls' recitals. And yet, you'll never guess who changes his tune. And in that pivotal and closing scene of the despicable me, uh, me, uh, Gru does everything in his power, his power to get there to see his daughters dance the ballet. And we watch his heart melt as he's been brought into the vibrant relationship that has finally changed his world. 
And at the end, at the end, with his daughters by his side, which is something that's pretty precious and I invite you to see it. It's just great. Through up to this point, has had a hard time reading bedtime stories to these kids. He actually says at one point, do you really like this stuff? <laughs> right? But he opens up their favorite bedtime story book. The goat at the beginning of the story has now become a new creation. He has inserted himself into their bedtime story. And he says, one big unicorn, strong and free, thought he was happy as he could be. Then three little kittens came around and turned his whole life upside down. They made him laugh. They made him cry. He never should have said goodbye. And now he knows he can never part from those three little kittens that have changed his heart. There's a movie to watch with your kids or your grandkids. And in doing so, there is a catechism right there where you can teach them that at that moment, the God, the triune God of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is about changing hearts as well. And the will of God is to change yours and to change yours every day while you're on this side of heaven. Sometimes we forget about that. Sometimes we think that all we have to do is maybe join the church, do a few things here, check a box, and we're done. Let me ask you, is your heart changing? Has your heart changed over the last year for the better? The last six months, the last 30 days, week, the last 24 hours? Are you becoming the person that God created you to be? Are you becoming the person rescued you to become? Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to work at refining you, allowing God's sanctifying grace to take hold of you until that day of perfection? Or are you an idol to yourself? Is it all about you? You don't have to change. You're perfect. If that is you, if you're not allowing the Spirit, the triune God, to change your life, to flood your heart with grace. If you're thinking that all of your spiritual life and your religious life is merely about checking boxes, then with the help of Jesus, cast it away. Cast that idol away. Renounce it. Say to the despicable me that tries to rule your life and to take over your life and say to it now, you're out of here. You're out of here. So that you may experience the vibrancy of a relationship with Jesus Christ that changes your life every day and in truth every moment so that the will of God may be experienced here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.
Gott.